Good morning. Good morning. What a beautiful day God has blessed us with today. This awesome sunshine. I don't know about y'all. We may have needed the rain, but I don't like the gray days. So I appreciate every ounce of sunshine we can get this time of year. Because I know it's not often that we're going to get it few and far between those days. This morning... I just love how the Holy Spirit works together because Beth and I have not conferred at all on the message. And when she read the call to worship this morning, I was like, man, that is so good. It's going to fall right into the line with what God has been speaking in my heart all week and right along with what Joni said. Those of you that were here last week know that we are, if you wanted to, downloaded the app called Read Scripture. I hope some of you had taken advantage of that to do daily Bible readings. And this morning we talked about the promises of God in that scripture reading that was in the Bible app. We also talked last week about starting our year off right with God. So the church house was open for prayer both here and at Madisonville this last week on the first day for anybody that wanted to come in and really center themselves and focus themselves on where they are in their relationship with God and what God's doing with us this year. So everything just kind of Flowed right together, and I love when the Holy Spirit does that, because I know that means he's moving here today, and I'm excited. I'm excited because as we get to talk in Romans chapter 6, if you want to turn there, Romans chapter 6, we're going to talk about what it means to be our old selves and then be our new creations that we are in God. Romans chapter 6, we're going to start with verse 15. Before we read our scripture this morning, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for allowing us to come together again today. To be able to share with one another. <coughs> we know, Lord, that we're gathered together with sad hearts this morning. But Lord, as we look at your message, and as we understand who we are, and where we are in our journey. Let us look forward to who we are going to become. Help us to center ourselves on you and your words and your thoughts. Help us to be open and receptive to hearing your spirit speak to us. Help us to be the lights in our community. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us, all the love that you share with us. Lord, this morning I ask every word from my mouth be yours and not mine. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 15. We have Paul here speaking. And Paul says, What then? Are we to sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard of righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification, and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, 
but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we had a problem going on here in the Roman church that Paul was addressing. The problem was they were, they were trying to understand. They were under this law, the Jewish law, for so long. And it was hard for them to understand that this law, Jesus came and fulfilled. That they weren't under this law anymore. They weren't under these rules and regulations and all of these rituals of purification, all of that. All of that was fulfilled when Jesus Christ died on the cross and raised again three days later. It was fulfilled. He gave us a new covenant the new covenant of which we partook of this morning, the new covenant of his shed blood, the new covenant of grace. But see, there was a problem. We still have the same problem today, but there was a problem then in the Roman church. The problem was, they were like, oh, my shackles are broken from this law. So that means I get to go do whatever I want to do, and I can just ask and get forgiveness, and I'm done. Anybody ever turn 18 and move out of your parents' house? <laughs> kind of like how that was. I remember the first day I moved out of my parents' house, I'm like, I'm a big girl now. I can do what I want. Go where I want. Talk to who I want. Eat what I want, stay up how late I want, watch what I want, listen to whatever music I want. Right? They had the same problem. They're like, oh, the law is gone. That means I can just go and do whatever I want, and then I can just ask forgiveness for it later, and I'm good. But Paul's saying, hold up. Hold up. That's not what the new covenant meant. And it's not what it was meant for. He said, you're going to be a slave to one or the other. Either you are a slave to lawlessness, to sin and disobedience, or you are a slave to God and a slave to righteousness. One leads to death, one leads to life. You get to pick. Your choice. Which one are you going to fall in? He said, the fruit of lawlessness is more lawlessness. Because what happens when we're in a lawless state? What happens when we're in a sinful state? I can tell you what happened to me, and I'm sure many of you share the same story. You don't get into lawlessness by yourself. You usually got a buddy ribbing you. Let's go do this. Let's go to this party. Let's go to this concert. Let's go hang out with these people. Some of my friends were like, here, have some. Right? Because we don't like to do lawlessness by ourselves. That's the thing. We don't like to sin alone. We like to gather groups of people together and do it all at once. Because guess what? Then we don't feel so bad. Because we're like, oh, well, if I'm doing it and you're doing it, it must not be that bad, right? It can't be that bad. If we're all doing this together, then it's okay. It's not that bad. But over in Galatians chapter 5, if you want to turn there with me. Galatians chapter 5. Paul says this. Starting in verse 18, he says, But if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, okay, the works of the law, are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. Things like these. Because guess what? I didn't go to the bar by myself. I didn't get drunk by myself. 
there was a group of us. And we were all hanging around, having a great time. But what happens when you get drunk and you have a party or you do any of the things that Paul listed over there in Galatians, what happens? Strife. Envy. Jealousy. I lived a life of drama and chaos. Because deep down we knew we couldn't really trust each other. <laughs> Maybe we were good friends, but if you got drunk, I already know you shared so-and-so secret with me. So what are you saying about me? What are you revealing about my life that I don't want you to? Because lawlessness leads to lawlessness. It's a crazy, chaotic cycle. If you've been doing the Bible app with us, read scripture, the videos this week are all talking about how humanity chose to define good and evil for themselves. And when we broke ourselves away from God, it was a downward spiral that just led to more and more sin and more chaos. Because what's good for me and my tribe doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you and tri your tribe, but I don't care. Because I'm caring about me. See, God meant good for the whole earth. He meant good for the whole humanity. If you read through the beginning, God declares things good. And when he created humans, he said it was very good. We were supposed to partner with God in his creation and take care of the planet. Take care of each other. We were supposed to be fruitful and multiply and build civilizations where everybody was taken care of. But then we decided to define good and evil for ourselves. The same thing the Romans were doing in our scripture. They went, I'm free from the law. So that means what's good for me doesn't matter if it harms you. I'm just going to ask forgiveness for it later. Paul says that's not so. You're either a slave to the law, disobedience, lawlessness, and death, or you choose to be a slave to God, righteousness, and life. We have a choice. We have an option. And as Jody said here at the beginning of the year, it's a good time to take stock. Where are we in our walk? Where are we in our relationship with God? Are we still a slave to that lawlessness? Or are we going to be a slave to righteousness, to good, to Jesus? If you go back over to Galatians 5, there's another list. Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit is these, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. You are no longer a slave to the law, but a slave to righteousness. You are crucified to the flesh with its passions and its desires. And if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Let us be a slave to Jesus Christ. 
righteousness. A member of the new covenant. Understanding that our actions, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, show us to be a slave of one or the other. The choice is yours. Lawlessness and death. Righteousness and life. This morning I ask you to reflect. Where are you? Who are you a slave to? And if you haven't chose life, I invite you into that covenant relationship. Or maybe you have and you need to renew that relationship. I invite you to come forward this morning as we sing. Turn your book 297.